Okay. This is a basic tutorial on how to remove a graphics card and install a new one, as well as how to install new RAM. This is the graphics the old graphics card it is a GTX 260. The RAM is back here hidden underneath all these wires here. One second. Alright, the first thing you should know whenever you go to work on a PC is you should either have a ground strap to your wrist or to keep one hand on the outside of the case at all times. This way you don't... Static electricity on your body does not short out the computer. Then you'll be out a whole lot of money and time. Okay. Huh? Okay. Those little sticks there, those are the ram that is the RAM. We're gonna start by putting in a RAM stick. Okay. And this is a relatively simple job. On a RAM, on your RAM, you will see these little pins here, these little white plastic pieces here. Hang on a second. Okay, you see, you can just barely see it there. You move one of these to the side, like so. See there, you just push it to the side. That locks it back into place. Okay. In this particular case, we don't have to remove any RAM, we're just going to put in the new stick. So you just find an open spot on your board, like so. Okay. As you can see, all the RAM slots on this particular board are taken up now. And all that remains is to secure the plastic tabs to make sure the RAM is in place. Okay. Now, a little side note here about the god awful mess of wiring you're seeing here. Most of this is actually, actually extra wires, since I did not buy a modular power supply. So there's not a whole lot here that's actually being used on my computer. So the trick is you've got to route it out of the way of all your fans, so that you don't block any airflow. In fact, if you route it properly, you can actually mitigate most, if not all, of the obstruction in your computer. Now, I am not terribly good at this. I just like things out of the way. So, I go for the simpler routing. I have to reconnect my power supply to the motherboard, which is this pin, this big thing down here. Okay. See how that disappears down in there. And all it is is a matter of snapping it into place on your motherboard 
Now we will move on to the next step of the project, which is power supply, which is the vid card. Now, this particular vid card, it has a jumper on the motherboard that it requires to be plugged in. Most motherboards have a jumper like this, so if you have a graphics card that needs it, you just pull it in and out like so. It's really easy. Now when you're removing your, your graphics card, you'll see this thing right here. This is what holds it secure and in place. Okay, Most computers now, this one included obviously, have an easy pull pull-up tab. Okay. And all you do is you pull it back and you can see here how it's it's ready to come out. Okay, like that. Now all you do is disconnect your power supply hookups from your graphics card. Which is this one here and this one here on this particular card. Now, all we have to do, you know, okay, gotta get rid of my old label, it's finally fallen off for the last time. Okay, now down here, you'll see another, you just barely see it on this, with this camera, but you can see this little tab here. Okay, it's a little black tab, right there, okay pull that back and then you can lift the card straight out of the PC okay and that is the removal of a graphics card now installations obviously going to be just the reverse order of but we're going to do that anyway on camera All right this is what was in it give you an idea of what a newer graphics card is like compared to an older one in the series this is the new one. As you can see, it is much smaller. It also consumes less power. However, it is effectively double the performance of the old graphics card, which is why I generally don't SLI. It's, as I mentioned to a friend before, by the time I can usually afford an S to SLI, a better card's already come out anyway that's about twice as good as what I had before. So, I don't bother. Alright, next up you have to make sure that you're going to be free on your ports, okay? My old card, as you can see, used to line up here. This new one is going to line up here. Now, to take these out, it's also really easy. All you have to do is pull these back, like so, and pull it out of the PC, okay? Now, the fun part. I'm going to have to put the light down, but basically all you're going to be doing is you're going to make sure this snaps into place when you're done. That right there. That. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this down so I can have a little bit better workroom here. Alright. Now, all you gotta do to put in a card. Okay, see how that's. how different that is from the original, obviously. So, it's cool in ports. It has extra ones in the back, so it's even less prone to overheating than the GTX 260 was, which was already very stable. So. One second here. We're you always end up with some kind of minor fitment issues, especially if you're going to do something on camera like this. Believe it or not, at one time I could have one of the this card in and out of this PC in fairly short order. Okay, I'm going to leave the camera there so that I can finagle this. 
and it can be a pain in the butt if you're trying to film and do something like this. Yes, as you can see, I'm having issues with the camera, but that's what you get for working on the surface that I chose to work on. Blade pl placement on your PC is always going to be an issue. This particular PC, the GTX 260, was pretty much the high-end card when this motherboard was new. So, And this is a really old case. Really, really old case. try the other port here now. Because it's a pain in this. Okay. Obviously that went much smoother than the other port, so now you know what the difference can be. As you can see, now with the old graphics card, I was actually hitting the last time I did this with the old one, and I tried to use this particular port, which is a PCI Express port. It's that one there. The white ones are just PCI. But in this particular case, as you can see, the old one I would have been hitting the wall area here. So, it would have been kind of useless for me to try to put anything there. I'll have to probably reroute my power supply wiring like crazy now. One moment. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to have to reroute my wiring. Again you're trying to make sure that you're not blocking any of your fans. That's important. Critically important. Okay. Also, SATA cables, whenever you start using them, real pain in the butt tendency to do this. They like coming unhooked, so always make sure all of your cables are hooked back up when you go to start your PC. Otherwise, you'll probably have a panic moment where you think you've suddenly done something horribly wrong. Your PC will not fire. In this case, my hard drive cable. So I would not have had anything booting up whatsoever. Okay, this particular graphics card, as you can see, does not have that same little baby wire port. Again, newer card, newer tech, more efficient. Okay, now you just plug in your PCI Express feed wire from your power supply. And now, all you have to do is re-secure everything. As you can see here, I have several, several fans in my computer. This is the processor fan, obviously. That is one of my case fans that I just barely got to fit in this old case. And I even have one on the side, as deplorable looking as it is with all the dust. Generally, too, what I like to do is, before I do the final fitting of everything, like this right now, is I like to boot the PC up first, so that I know everything that I just bought, 
actually works before I do a final button down. Since we're kind of doing this as a how-to video, I will just go ahead and show you how to reconnect everything. As you can see, this here is going to be a bit of an issue, but you always end up with some kind of problem with a graphics card, I swear. I'm going to do here, since this obviously is not going to fit without modifying anything, seeing as how this is my demo run to make sure that this card is good, I am going to just plug everything back up. Again, make sure that everything is secure that you have modified or have been around. In this case, we're making sure the RAM is firmly secure. As you can see on this side, it is. Okay, and on this side we are good to go as well. So, we're going to make sure, again, all wires, if possible, have at least an inch of clearance from any power supply cables from to your fans. In this case, it's not exactly going to be feasible to do so, due to how I have had to route my wires and cluster them together. Now I could probably get away with doing this instead, but I like having some gaps. That way your cooling doesn't suffer. Okay, again, make sure your wiring, especially if you have an external case fan like this, isn't going to hit your said external side fan. Removing the case, by the way, or the outside of your case, is really simple. Most computers have two screws on the back of this here. You see? Most of them have two of those. And usually, and they look like this, usually your screws look something like that. Okay, you see that one there? Usually they look something like that. But... In my case, I long ago got rid of those, simply because I used to have my computer apart very, very often. So, for me, it was just a pain in the ass that I didn't want to deal with. There you go. And that is the basics of an install for graphics card and RAM. And as you can see, power supply cables, they also just clip in, clip out, real easy. And, uh... I will be uploading this shortly.